Hello, my name is Kelly Baker Josephs, and I will be reading a Brathwaite poem from the collection Words Need Love Too, which is his first poetry collection after what he calls his Time of Salt, which was a difficult time in his life. It's also the first collection of original poetry that is published after he moves to New York City. It's published in 2000 by House of Nahisi Publishers. And I am reading the first poem in the collection. It's called Jerry Ward and the Fragmented Spaceship Dream Story. It's a long title. Um, I chose it because not only does it give us some of Brathwaite's ideas about the African diaspora and the connections between peoples of the African diaspora, but it also gives us a sense of the ways that Brathwaite's words and his works can sit with us for a long time and give birth to other ideas, perhaps. And there's a little note after the title, and it's, it says that Jerry Ward reminds Brathwaite um, via a telephone conversation at NYU of a talk that he gave many years before at um, Tougaloo, Mississippi about the slave trade and Middle Passage. So, Jerry Ward and the Fragmented Spaceship Dream Story. You may recall having met me when you lectured at a Southern Black Cultural Alliance meeting here in 1983 in Tougaloo, Tougaloo College, February 5th, 1992. I, I'm afraid I had not written anything down, nor was it recorded, but he remembers a passage in which, and he tried to spell it back out for me on a telephone, I said that it was as if the spaceship bringing us here had like crash into the new world plantation and exploded on impact. The stars of the ship from their commune origin scattering over a wide, wide area and each part you see in the goodness or badness of time springing its own roots and getting on with its own business but preserving the memory since each was a part, now trying to be whole, of the original, the source, with the possibility, indeed, the ideal intention of one day reconstructing, reconstituting the original ancestral, at least symbolically, at least metaphorically, at least spiritually, at least philosophically, so that as in space travel, there could be an evanescent but very real four-dimensional image of the origins made out of atoms of life, light, a holograph, giving, allowing each one of us in our different parts, a common memory and language and angle really with which to speak to each other and to the world. He did not say, in effect, all this to me. He might have said more, he might have said less. I remember him saying that he often wonder what had happened to my peace and what had happened to the pieces of my peace, where, if, how, when they had grown. And I thanked him. Thank him for this gift of memory so early in the morning of snow, and that it was good and wonderful, that the idea, the words, the images had remained, had, I suspect, been staining in his mind so that now he had met me so many years after, even though I had forgotten. That night, I think it was, or must or might have been in Tougaloo, and what I said and thought and felt that evening and had allowed it to be cast by the wayside. Someone unknown and unexpected had picked one of the green shoots of metal or mental fragment up and planted it, and it had grown and spread and flourished. 
perhaps in his own work and personality, so that as I sit here by the roadside in this strange city so far from flowers and the flames of cane fields and Mutta Africa walking it with me over the wooden fence and through the plowed brown near Indian ground and touching the great black anthracite stones come out of those cane fields, discovering Tomek and Totomek Barbados wrap in cardboard and old half forgotten letters and something look like flower bags from the latex unpredicted snowfall. And he stopped right there in the middle of the lecture of the street because he recognized me after all these years. <laughs>